going on with my nursing brothers and sisters as well as my healthcare professionals alike. I hope that you all are having a wonderful day. I have been getting a highly requested video about understanding IV fluid replacements and I want to make this process easier for you. So today we're going to be talking about isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic IV fluid replacements made easy. an oldie but a goodie make sure that you're subscribed and hit that bell notification it does let you know when I post new content and I will be posting new content now five days a week so keep an eye open for that make sure that you follow me on my social media I am on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and make sure that you comment like and share these videos with your friends let's get started all right boys and girls let's break this down. So what are we looking at in regards to our fluid solutions? We've got two broad categories. Um, to start off with, we've got our crystalloids. What are our crystalloids? These are the solutions that flow easily within the bloodstream. They go to our cells and they go to our tissues. No problem. Easy peasy. That's your isotonics, your hypotonics, as well as your hypertonic solutions. But we've got another category. We've got colloids. Colloids are usually always hypertonic. So that's your albumin, your plasma protein fraction, as well as your whole human blood products. But when do we honestly give these solutions? We give these solutions when patients aren't responding to um, crystalloids being given to them. So they need kind of a volume expander within their blood um, stream. But we're not gonna really be discussing colloids today because that's a whole nother video to discuss. Today we're gonna be primarily focusing on our crystalloids. So let's start off with our isotonic. So what does isotonic mean? Iso stands for same or equal, and tonic is always stands for concentration of a solution. So when you're thinking of isotonic, what I did to break that down was I said in search of that tonic baby. So those are our happy cells. Those are the solutions that flow easily from within the cell to outside the cell, and it doesn't change any configuration of the cell at all. So those are our isotonic solutions. So what happens with isotonic solutions? They have an equal concentration of dissolved particles within the cell, the intracellular fluid, as well as the extracellular fluid outside of the cell. So osmotic pressure is the same, either or, and cells don't shrink or they don't swell when fluid moves between them. So what are the different types of isotonic solutions that we're looking at? We're looking at that normal saline, hence the word normal. So 0.9% normal saline is a mixture of salt, water, and it also contains electrolytes, um, sodium, as well as chloride. We've got our lactated ringers. They contain electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride. And they also have lactate, which is converted by the liver into sodium bicarbonate. Lastly, moving on to our little trickster of the isotonic group, that is 5% dextrose and water, d 5 W. So what's interesting about this is that while the solution is in the bag, it has not been given to the patient, it's still within the bag, it is considered an isotonic solution. However, when the solution is actually given peripherally or centrally to a patient, the dextrose metabolizes extremely quickly. The body metabolizes the glucose mole molecules and acts like a hypotonic solution, leaving the body with only water. So when it's left with only the water, it becomes a hypotonic solution. So just for your mind, while D5W in the bag is isotonic, as soon as it is given to the patient, it is hypotonic. And just keep in mind also with this one, just as a future note, large amounts of solution, specifically D5W being given to a patient, will eventually cause hyperglycemia. So what are the reasons that we give isotonic solutions? Um, they're administered to increase extracellular fluid volume, such as like dehydration, blood loss, surgery, those type of things are the reasons that we give specifically isotonic solution. All right, let's move on to our hypotonic solution. So what does hypotonic mean? Hypotonic is low slash under, that's kind of what it's considered. Hypo means low. And tonic means concentration of a solution. That never changes. So an easy way to remember this that I learned while I was in nursing school is to think of hypo as hippo. So we're thinking of a big glorious hippopotamus, that means that the swells are gonna get very swollen. So when you're thinking of your hypo, even though it means low, you wanna think of that hippo of what that specific solution is doing and it's causing the cells to swell. So like I said before, hypotonic solutions have fewer dissolved particles, such as electrolytes that are found inside the cell. So hypotonic solutions are given cautiously because fluid moves from the extracellular space 
into the cells causing a swelling. That's the body's way of trying to maintain homeostasis. So the swells, because everything's moving inside the cell, is going to start swelling. So remember, hippo, swell hypotonic. So examples of these solutions, you're always looking for like your fractioned solutions. So you're looking at your half normal saline, your one fourth normal saline, your one third normal saline. So when you're thinking of your low, you're thinking of those fractioned normal salines. But like we said before, you see that D5W again, because like I said, while it's inside the bag, it's fine. When it goes into the body, it's a completely different story. So those are your hypotonic solutions. So why are we given hypotonic solutions? We're given it for patients whose cells are dehydrated and fluids are needed in the extracellular spaces. So when we're looking at your hypernatremia, that means there's way too much sodium inside the bloodstream. Um, diabetic ketoacidosis, as well as hyperosmolar hyperglycemic states. So what really is a contraindication for hypotonic solutions? Of course, there's gonna be patients that we don't wanna give these solutions to. So we're looking at patients that have cardiovascular collapse from vascular fluid depletion. Um, fluid shifting from extracellular space into intracellular space, which eventually could cause their cells to burst. Those are one uh, set of patients that we don't want to give it to. Another one is increased intracranial pressure patients because the fluid shifts in the brain. So a change in level of consciousness, motor and sensory deficits, as well as changes in like uh, size, shape, and response of their, of their pupils. Those are things that we need to look for if a patient is having increased intracranial pressure um, as a result of a hypotonic solution. And lastly, our liver disease, our burns, and our trauma patients, we definitely don't want to give these solutions to because they already suffer from abnormal uh, fluid shifts within their cellular um, systems, their interstitial spaces, their body cavities. It can cause them to become hypovolemic. You don't want to give uh, hypotonic solutions specifically to that patient population. So moving on to our hypertonic solution. So what does that mean? Hypertonic solution means hyper, too much. There's just way too much going on. There's way too much in the system. Hyper means too much. Hypo means too low. And tonic, of course, again, means that concentration of solution. So what is an easy way to remember hypertonic? So a hypertonic, when you think of someone who's extremely hyper and has to constantly be moving and they need to be going, those are the people that are usually slim and trim. So hypertonic solutions are gonna cause your, shell, your cells to shrink. So by causing your cells to shrink, it's like the cells are losing weight. So you think of your hyper people, keep it as slim and trim, your cells are also keeping it slim and trim, but not in a good way. That's how you remember those hypertonic solutions. So what's going on when we give hypertonic solution? There's too many dissolved particles that are found within inside the cell. So the hypertonic solution draws the fluid out of the intracellular space and it causes that extracellular space to expand. So we've got all this expansion going on within the, within the vein and then our little, little tiny cells are all shrinked up and shriveled up. So like we said before, hyper means high. So we're looking for high numbers. We're not looking for those fraction numbers. So 3% normal saline. 5% normal saline, 10% uh, dextrose in water, 5% dextrose in 0.9% normal saline, 5% dextrose in 0.5% normal saline, as well as our 5% dextrose in lactated ringers. Specifically, the reason that we give these type of solutions is for heat-related disorders, hypotonic dehydration, as well as freshwater uh, drownings is a lot of the reasons that we give hypertonic solutions. So contraindications, who are we not gonna give hypertonic solutions to? Um, cardiac and renal disease patients who are unable to tolerate having extra fluids should not be given these type of solutions, as well as patients that are at risk for cellular dehydration, like our diabetic ketoacidosis patients. Um, they should not receive hypertonic solutions because if we continue to draw all of that fluid outside of their cells, their cells aren't gonna be useful. They're not gonna carry oxygen to the rest of the body. So those are specific contraindications that we need to think about when we're taking care of specific patient populations. I hope that this information was helpful for you. I know that there's a lot to cover when we're talking about fluid replacement, but isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic are one of the main crystalloids that you're gonna see in regards to your practice. You're gonna need to know why you give it to patients and why you don't give it to patients. So I hope that this covered a little bit of kind of what's going on at the top to help you with those nursing exams, or for those of us already in the nursing field that just kind of need a refresher. So I look forward to speaking with you all again soon, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.